हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे मधुरम मधुरे भ्योपी मंगले भ्योपी मंगलम पावनम पावने भ्योपी हरे राम एव केवलम हरे नामा हरे नामा हरे नाम एव केवलम कलो नास्ते नास्ते चेतो दर्पण मार्जनम भव महादावापण श्रेय कैरव चंद्रिका वितरण विद्यावधु जीवन आनंदाबुधिवर्धन प्रतिपद पूर्णमृता स्वादन सर्वात्म स्नपन परम विजयते श्रीकृष्ण संकीर्तन नामकारी बहुदा निज सर्वशक्ति तत्रता निमिता स्मरण न काल एकदृशी तव कृपा भगवन्मापी दुर्दिदृशनुराग क्रीड़ादी सुनीषेना करोरपी सहिष्णुना अमानदेना कीर्तनीय सदा हरि न धनम न जनम न सुंदरी कविता जगदीश काम मम जन्मनी जन्मनीश्वरे भवता भक्ति रहय तो की ऐ नंदा तनुज किंक पति विषमे भवाबुध कृपया तव पाद पंकज स्थित भूलि सदृश विचित नयन गलदश्रुधारया वदनम गदगदरुभया गिरा पुलकैर्मीचित वपू कदा तव नाम ग्रहणे भविष्य युगात निमेशेना चक्षुषा प्रभृशात शून्यात जगत्सर्व गोविंद विरहे न मे आश्लिष्टवा पादरता विनशुमादर्शना मर्महता करो यथा तथा विदातुल पटो मत्राणनाथस्तु सभूरशेक्षाष्टकश्लोक जयी पाढ़ेशु ने कृष्ण प्रेम भक्ति तार पाड़े दीने दीने एनी वन हु रिसाइड्स और हियर्स श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु शिक्षाष्टकम प्रेयर्स हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी हम बोलो बस हरे कृष्ण माता जी हरे कृष्ण एनी वन हु हियर्स और रिसाइड्स श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु शिक्षाष्टकम प्रेयर्स दैट पर्सन कृष्ण प्रेम विल इंक्रीज डे आफ्टर डे प्रभु शिक्षाष्टक श्लोक जयी पढ़े सुने कृष्ण प्रेम भक्ति तारा पाड़े दीने देने टूडे इज अ वेरी ऑस्पेशियस डे टूडे इज पूर्णिमा विच इट सेल्फ इज अस्पेशियस तिथि द फुल मून वॉट आर सम ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट पूर्णिमा गौर पूर्णिमा बलराम पूर्णिमा शरद पूर्णिमा वेरी नाइस एंड टूडे इज द माघ पूर्णिमा इट इज द 
Purnima on which Shri Narottam Das Thakur appeared in this world. <clears throat> so, in the evening we will discuss about Shri Narottam Das Thakur, and now also today also in the morning we will discuss a little bit about Shri Narottam Das Thakur. But I would like to focus this morning on one particular aspect of the life of Shri Narottam Das Thakur, and that is. Guru Padashray, taking shelter of one's Guru. <coughs> Shri Narottam Das Thakur exemplifies a surrendered disciple. Our founder Acharya, His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada once said that a perfect disciple can become a Guru. Before one becomes a guru, one has to become a perfect disciple. And Srila Narottam Das Thakur teaches us through his own example. There is a very beautiful bhajan <coughs> that Srila Narottam Das Thakur has written. Srila Prabhupada was very fond of the bhajans of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Srila Narottam Das Thakur and Srila Rocham Das Thakur. In one purport, Srila Prabhupada writes that we must sing the bhajans of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Srila Narottam Das Thakur and Srila Lochan Das Thakur. Srila Narottam Das Thakur wrote many bhajans. One particular bhajan glorifies the devotees. And because today is the Tithi, the appearance day, Abhirbhav Tithi of Srila Narottam Das Thakur, who is a great Vaishnav Acharya, let us sing this bhajan which glorifies Vaishnav Thakur. We can offer this bhajan to Srila Narottam Das Thakur today. It is written by him. He himself has written this. Or we can think of any great Vaishnava Acharya and sing this bhajan. It's a very versatile bhajan. So <clears throat> we'll sing. It is, uh, it goes like this. E bara karuna karo Vaishnava Gosai. E bara karuna karo Vaishnava Gosai. E baro karuna koro Vaishnava Gosai. Karuna Karo Vaishnava Gosai. Oh Vaishnava Gosai, Oshila Narthandas Thakur, Karuna Karo. Please be merciful to us. Patita Pavana Toma Bine Kehanai. Other than you, O Vaishnava Gosai, there is no one who is Patita Pavan. Patita means one who are fallen. And Pavan means to save. No one can save the fallen souls like the Vaishnava Gosai, the Vaishnava Thakurs. E baro karuna koro Vaishnava Gosai. E baro karuna koro Vaishnava Gosai. Patita pavana to ma bine ke hanai. There were hippies who were drinking alcohol, doing drugs, having all illicit relationships, eating meat. They came close to Prabhupada. What happened? The sins went away. Jahara nikata gele papa durejai. What is the quality of a Vaishnava Gosai? If you go close to the Vaishnava, your sins go far away. Isn't that beautiful? 
ए मोन दयालो प्रभु केबा कोठ पाए वेर कैन बी फाइंड सच अ मर्सिफुल मास्टर जस्ट बाय गोइंग नियर दिस पर्सन आवर सिंफुल टेंडेंसीज आवर सिंस दे गो अवे फार अवे जहार निकटे गेले पाप दूरे जाए प्रभुपात कम so who is more merciful vaishnav yeah. gosai and ganga ji feels happy when you say this don't think ganga ji will get offended ha huh? you are calling prabhu bad greater no ganga ji takes greatest pleasure there is a story of lord panduranga you know, lord vithal in pandharpur maharashtra there was this boy pundalik hmm? you know who pundalik was in his previous life i will leave that as a homework <laughs> pundalik he was a very naughty fellow he ill treated his parents he disrespected his parents he always made fun of his parents and once his parents said that we are parents were great devotees pure devotees they said we want to go on pilgrimage we want to go to kashi for pilgrimage and from there we will go to badrinath so he said i will also come with you just to mock his parents can you believe his parents were walking and he was sitting with his wife on a horse back oh. and he was mocking his parents come on come on oldies walk faster walk faster he was such a wicked fellow pundalik they came to kashi where there is ganga ji and jamuna ji and saraswati ji all the three rivers are there at prayag and there they decided the parents and parents were very tolerant they would not say anything to pundalik they continued chanting hari 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 they were chanting and walking so many days they finally came to the confluence of ganga jamuna saraswati in prayag and they were going to stay in the ashram of a sadhu so pundalik said me and my wife will also stay where else will we stay so we will also stay there so they were all staying in the ashram at night pundalik got up to answer nature's call and he saw three very beautiful ladies but they were dressed very haggardly their sarees were dirty they looked very weak and they had broomsticks in their hands and they were sweeping the ashram of the sadhu in whose ashram all of them were staying these three ladies at night were doing seva they were sweeping the courtyard of the sadhu's ashram pundalik was became very curious what's going on so he went to them and he asked them who are you you look very beautiful but you look at the same time very dirty and tired and weak so they tell pundalik that we are ganga jamuna and saraswati personified because so many people come and take bath in us we become contaminated so how do we become purified tirthi kurvanti this sadhu is a great devotee we come and we do some seva at his ashram at night when nobody is watching we sweep the ashram we clean the ashram we sprinkle water in the courtyard so in the morning when the sadhu mahatma and all the sadhaks 
they get up they find everything clean dust free nice by doing the sadhu seva we become purified and we are ready in the morning when all the sinful people come and they bathe in our waters we are ready because we have been purified but for our purification we serve great sadhus but pundalik we dread the day when you will come and bathe in our waters because you are such a sinful man we don't want you to come and bathe in our waters because you have been offending great devotees like your own parents whose touch we desire because they are always chanting hari 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 hearing these words of ganga ji pundalik he realized what a sinful person he was and he immediately fell at the feet of his parents and said i am so sorry i am so sorry ganga ji preached to me and i have understood how important it is to serve the devotees even ganga ji feels purified by the touch of great devotees like you and i have been offending you day and night me and my wife and he tells his wife from today we have nothing to do with krishna from today we have nothing to do with krishna from today we will only do vaishnav seva <laughs> from today we will only be servants to our parents now parents are sitting on the horse back and husband and wife they are they are pulling the horse they are massaging the parents feet they fetch water for the parents they wash the parents clothes they are doing all seva and they take the parents all over to all the holy places to badrinath to vrindavan mathura and they finally they come back to pandharpur and he continue serving his parents krishna is so pleased with him you know the story krishna himself comes the public i want to meet you public says wait krishna i am worshiping i am serving my parents they are great devotees so you wait and he throws a brick you stand on this brick and then i will talk to you let me first serve my parents so he continues to massage his parents when the parents take a take a nap in the afternoon he goes and he tells krishna krishna what is it now tell me by that time krishna is standing waiting for him like this that is vithal so <clears throat> this is the power of serving the devotees so ganga ji feels very happy when devotees are glorified because she herself serves devotees to become purified of all the dirt that people put in her by bathing in her <laughs> so shri narottam das thakur is writing gangara sparasha hile paschate pavan only after doing archaman or bathing in ganga jal one becomes purified but what about pure devotees like prabhupad simply by seeing them darshane pavitra karo ei to margo many times devotees have complained that oh we went to sadhu sangha there were 2000 more than 2000 devotees i couldn't speak to my guru maharaj i couldn't get personal time with my guru maharaj not required darshane pavitra karo ei to margo simply by having darshan of a pure devotee we become purified there is no need to have personal audience one on one time not required गंगार स्पर्श होइले पाश्चते पाव commit some seva aparad to krishna how do we rectify hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare take shelter of hari naam hari naam is more merciful hari naam is more merciful isn't it there are so many seva aparads 32 how many naam aparads <laughs> so if we commit any offense to krishna 
इफ यू चैंड कृष्णा 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 हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा देन यू विल बी कृष्णा विल फॉर गेट ठीक है हरी स्थान है अपराधे तारे हरे नाम बट वॉट इफ यू ऑफेंड डिवोटीज तोमा स्थान है अपराध है ना ही परित्राण देर इज नो ट्रीटमेंट देर इज नो एंटीडोट देर इज नो क्योर देर इज नो वैक्सीन इफ वन कमिट्स वैष्णव अपराध स्पिरिचुअल लाइफ इज रू एंड चैतन्य महाप्रभु कॉल्ड इट वॉट ऑफेंस मैड एलिफेंट ऑफेंस अवर भक्ति लता इट्स अ क्रीपर भक्ति इज अ क्रीपर दैट ग्रोज अराउंड द ट्री ऑफ भजन and if we call the if we allow the mad elephant inside what will happen the mad elephant will uproot that creeper and throw it down but what happens when a plant is uprooted and thrown what happens to the leaves immediately no it takes time so if you uproot a plant for few days the plant will look nice and green what happens when you do vishnu aprad do we immediately get cholera like amog no. you are fortunate if we do do we immediately get leprosy like gopal chapal no. you are fortunate if we do but now mahaprabhu is not there doing his leela so when we commit vishnu aprad we don't get leprosy and cholera nothing happens our leaves remain green and we feel i got away i can criticize devotees i can blaspheme devotees and nothing will happen to me we are like the uprooted tree we are already uprooted hari krishna we are already uprooted <clears throat> my guru maharaj shri radha nath swami maharaj said in one class in pune yatra in my years in krishna consciousness i have seen that anyone who has blasphemed devotees they have fallen down anyone who blasphemes devotees they always fall down nobody gets away because krishna is supremely displeased by someone who criticizes devotees so we should not criticize anyone and then maharaj said that i have like etched this in my heart the statement of maharaj maharaj said people criticize people criticize vaishnavas and that's why devotees fall down like raindrops those words went so deep in my heart maharaj that's why devotees fall down like raindrops so many devotees have difficulties in their life it is because of criticizing we should not criticize anyone shri chaitanya mahaprabhu in chaitanya bhagavat says anyone who chants hare krishna maha mantra and does not criticize anyone i will personally take that person back to godhead mahaprabhu has promised just do two things chant hare krishna and take a vow i will not criticize anyone devotee so murari gupta asks does it apply to only devotees don't criticize devotees महाप्रभु सेस एवरीबॉडी इज माय डिवोटी जीवर स्वरूप है कृष्ण और नित्यदास एवरीवन इज माय डिवोटी सम नो इट सम डोंट नो लाइक जॉर्ज हैरिसन रोड फेमसली इन द फोर वर्ड ऑफ कृष्णा बुक एवरीवन इज लुकिंग फॉर कृष्णा एवरीवन इज लुकिंग फॉर लव सम नो इट सम डोंट एवरीवन इज अ डिवोटी ऑफ कृष्णा वी शुड नॉट क्रिटिसाइज एनीवन व्हेन आई रिसीव्ड माय सेकंड इनिशिएशन दिस थिंग शुड नॉट बी स्पोकन बट आई डोंट नो व्हाई आई एम स्पीकिंग when i received my second initiation i asked shri radha nath swami maharaj maharaj any instructions for me and maharaj said two instructions he said spread the sweetness of krishna consciousness and do not criticize anyone and those same instructions i found in chaitanya bhagavat also later on so this is very important we should never criticize shri narottam das thakur whose appearance day is today he says if we criticize devotees there is no treatment it becomes very difficult to make spiritual advancement <clears throat> and what happens how does it begin it begins with seeing the faults first we do dosh darshan we see a fault in a devotee we not we don't say anything right away we just keep it in our heart hmm, this devotee is like that we see the fault and we meditate on that fault what happens if we do dosh darshan we will do dosh kirtan if we see a fault if we meditate on others faults it's just a matter of time before we start speaking about it so shri narottam das thakur is saying हरि स्थाने अपराधे तारे हरि नाम तोमा स्थाने अपराधे नाही परित्राण तोमारी दे सदा गोविंद वेश Why 
why is vaishnavapra so dangerous because tomara hridaya sada govinda vishnam in the heart of a devotee govinda is all, lord krishna is always there so when we criticize a devotee we are criticizing krishna and the devotee and krishna is very displeased and govinda kahe vaishnav mora pran krishna says that my vaishnavas my devotees are my life and soul so krishna says my devotees are my life and soul so we should not criticize the devotee we should love devotees we should encourage devotees those who encourage others they make spiritual advancement <clears throat> प्रति जन्मे कोरी आशा चरणे राधुली डूंग Anybody knows, especially the kids, what was Shri Haridas Thakur doing when he was leaving this world? Very good. He was chanting Hare Krishna. So with his mouth, he was chanting Hare Krishna. What was he holding to his heart? Very good. He was holding the lotus feet of Shaitanya Mahaprabhu to his heart. Okay. And what was he doing with his hands? Ah, he was like this. He was touching. the lotus feet of all the devotees who were standing around so mahaprabhu had his one foot on his heart with his eyes he was gazing at the moon like face of shri gaura chandra and he was chanting shri krishna chaitanya shri krishna chaitanya now he has got mahaprabhu he has got the holy name so one may say what is the need of vaishnavas now you have got krishna mahaprabhu is standing on your chest you are looking at his face you are chanting hari na with his hands he was reaching out to the lotus feet of all the devotees swarup da madar goswami ramanand ra everyone and putting it on his head haridas thakur prati janme kori aash charan era dhuni narottam e karo daya apan arambhi okay now three kids have to answer krishna krishna das kaviraj goswami chaitanya charitamrit says there are three substances three things which are mahabal which are very very powerful to increase our bhakti so i want three kids to answer one by one what are the three things that are very powerful one tell me one thing the holy name the holy name is very powerful but this is something else <laughs> this is very very powerful this gives us the ability to chant holy name the incessantly water, the water that washes the feet of very good very good the water that has washed the lotus feet of a pure devotee okay good the second is the dust from the lotus feet of a pure devotee what are we going to do after the long bhagavatam class <laughs> ah. <laughs> what do devotees do <laughs> devotees are prasa mahaprasad chor krishna is makhan chor we are mahaprasad chor so the remnants from the plate of a devotee and who exemplifies this in chaitanya charitamrit who is the devotee who is expert at doing these things ah kalidas and who is he related to kalidas is a relative of which goswami antelila chaitanya charitamrit he was from the same village he was a relative of
जय रूप सनातन भट्ट रघुनाथ श्री जीव गोपाल भट्ट दास रघुनाथ रघुनाथ दास गोस्वामी यस ही वॉज अ रिलेटिव ऑफ रघुनाथ दास गोस्वामी and what what is what does krishna das kaviraj goswami say about these three things what is that verse any what any kid knows the verse kirtana sundari mata ji and radha have become kids bhakta pada dhuliyar bhakta pada jal bhakta bhukta avashesha tina mahabal these three things are very powerful one of them is the dust from the lotus feet of pure devotee hari bol chala narottam sagar is saying i aspire birth after birth for the dust of the lotus feet of the pure devotees <clears throat> chala let me ask some more quiz questions okay we chanted mangala charan who wrote o magyanati mirandhasya gnananjana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmai shri gurave namaha this beautiful verse glorifying shri guru who has composed this Prabhupada gave it to us, but who composed it originally? Who wrote it? Like Chaitanya Charitamrita is written by Krishna Das Kavi Raj Goswami. Shila Prabhupada ji gave it to us in English. Hmm. Hmm. Close. Bhakti Vinod Thakur. No. Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Yes, Narottam Das Thakur. Okay, who wrote the Pranam Mantra for Rupa Goswami? श्री चैतन्य मनोभिष्टम स्थापित मेन भूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददाधाम बोथ दीज वर्सेस वेर कंपोज बाय श्री नरोत्तम दास ठाकुर सो सो मेनी भजन दीज टू नाइस वर्सेस इन आर मंगलाचरण आई एम जस्ट मेन्शनिंग दिस सो वी नो एवरी डे वी आर रिसाइटिंग दीज वर्सेस सो वी शुड नो हू रोड दम इट विल हेल्प अस रिमेम्बर देर इज वन सॉन्ग दैट श्री नरोत्तम दास ठाकुर रोड which everyone sings every day all over the world in every ha huh? tulsi arti is dina krishna dasa ko hai ei vena ra ho shri radha govinda sada ye dasa si it is krishna das siddha not krishna das kaviraj siddha krishna das of govardhan in the line of shila vishwanath chakra thakur another krishna das he wrote tulsi arti guru vandana guru vandana our prabhupad puja shri guru charana padma it is written by shila narottam das thakur today is his tithi so we should remember all these things all these gifts of shila narottam das thakur to us so with this today we will discuss the importance of guru padashray taking shelter at the lotus feet of shri guru so let's begin the bhagavatam class now <laughs> hare krishna so we'll be discussing one of my favorite verses this is one of my favorite verses from shrimad bhagavatam <clears throat> shrimad bhagavatam canto 5 you can all open up shrimad bhagavatam canto 5 chapter 12 entitled rahugana maharaj converses with jada bharat adita hmm? narayan knows which probably which verse it is so canto 5 chapter 12 conversation between rahugana maharaj and jada bharat text number 12 i am asking questions to all of you because once i was asking hari parshad prabhu prabhu ji you travel all over the world especially all over the us speaking hari katha which is a favorite place to speak hari katha and guess what hari parshad prabhu told me iskon you goloka ha huh? yes really he told me iskon you goloka He said, "Devotees are so enthusiastic. They are so much interested in hearing, and they are so well read." Hari Bhasha Thakur told me. Oh, already revealed this. <laughs> But don't tell this to anybody, okay? Because I don't want Hari Bhasha Thakur to go to ISV, and there <laughs> you don't like ISV, Prabhu. <laughs> Or Hari Bhasha Thakur going to to somewhere in New York and New Jersey, and <laughs> so keep this a secret. <clears throat> So, Shrimad Bhagavatam, five point twelve point twelve. Rahu Ganayata Tapasana Yati. Nache Jayane Rupana Grihatva. Na 
छंदलाग्नि सूर्य वीना महत्दरजोषेक Translation and purport by our beloved founder Acharya, His Divine Grace Abhay Charanar Vinda Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shila Prabhupada. Shila Prabhupada ki yeah. translation. My dear King Rahugana, unless one has the opportunity to smear his entire body with the dust of the lotus feet of the great devotees, one cannot realize the absolute truth. Hey Krishna, what is the meaning of Abhishek? To bathe. What does Jada Bharat say? We should bathe with what? Mahat Pad Raj, the dust from the lotus feet of the great souls, great devotees. Mahat Pad Raj Abhishek. We do Abhishek with that, not with water and soap, with the dust from the lotus feet of a pure devotee. My dear King Rahugana, unless one has the opportunity. to smear his entire body with the dust of the lotus feet of great devotees one cannot realize the absolute truth one cannot realize the absolute truth simply by observing celibacy brahmacharya one cannot realize the absolute truth simply by strictly following the rules and regulations of householder life leaving home as a vanaprastha accepting sannyas or undergoing severe penances in winter by keeping oneself submerged in water or surrounding oneself in summer by fire and the scorching heat of the sun there are many other processes to understand the absolute truth but the absolute truth is only revealed to one who has attained the mercy of a great devotee this is the secret of spiritual life somehow or the other we have to become dear to a pure devotee Just somehow or the other, win the heart of a pure devotee. Shri Pad Narad Muni in Narad Bhakti Sutra writes again. This is one of my favorite sutras. Shri Pad Narad Muni writes: Sa Tarati, Sa Tarati, Sa Lokan Tarayati. He gets delivered. He gets delivered. He delivers others. Sa Tarati, Sa Tarati, Sa Lokan Tarayati. A pure devotee himself is delivered. Himself is delivered and delivers others also. anybody who a pure devotee glances at mercifully or considers their own that person will be delivered it is a fact and george harrison is a proof of this he was not initiated he didn't shave his head and uh, wear saffron and join the ashram but he loved shri prabhupada His Grace Sham Sundar Prabhu came to Radha Gopinath Mandir once for a Sunday feast, and he told a fascinating story. He said, "I was very good friends with George Harrison, and somehow, you know, our friendship just clicked. The moment we met, we just got along so well. And everybody would make friendship with George Harrison because he was one of the Beatles, and ultimately ask him for money. They would ask him for money, and George Harrison was tired of this. People making friendship with him." with some ulterior motive but well, ultimately they wanted his help money something shamsundar prabhu said i made it a point in my relationship with george harrison i never asked him for anything never mukund goswami would ask you know whatever was required for the service in iskon but i would never ask him my friendship with, with him was just friendship we would just talk about krishna talk about music 
talk about life i never asked him anything and i had vowed to myself i will never ask george harrison for anything because it will spoil our friendship and then he will think i am just one of them asking him for help one day he said shila prabhupad called me <laughs> <laughs> and shila prabhupad told me that uh, george harrison is a nice boy you should go to him and you should ask him if you'll help me to publish krishna book i have written this krishna book it is a summary study of the entire 10th canto i don't know if i will live to personally translate every verse of the 10th canto but before i leave i want to give this world the 10th canto then even if i go nothing is lost because the whole world has got the authorized summary study of the 10th canto i want to publish it in the english language can you ask george if he will donate some 19 or 20 thousand dollars now in the 1970s this was a lot of money in the early 1970s and shamsul prabhu was devastated he was saying this. it was the most uncomfortable instruction to follow i did not want to do it and i resisted i told shil prabhu a uh, prabhupa um, should we try in india maybe some of the industrialist friends they might want to some pious hindus might want to publish the krishna book <clears throat> prabhu said no i want you to go and ask george and shamsul prabhu was very uncomfortable but you know guru agya whatever guru says one must do so he went he called up george and he said uh, can i come over for dinner one day so yeah yeah, yeah. let's come let's catch up so <clears throat> shamsul prabhu went it was just shamsul prabhu and george and in his mansion it was a big table where 20 people could sit it was just two of them sitting and they were having dinner they were just about to start eating dinner it was very nice you know nice chandeliers nice lights and everything and jamuna was cooked and jamuna cooked that that day hari bol hari bol so jamuna mata ji cooked this doesn't get better than that <laughs> so jamuna mata ji cooked thank you for prabhu hare krishna and they were just about to start eating there was a thunder lightning and all the lights went out and they couldn't even see the plate they couldn't see their spoons and they, they, everything everything went dark it was raining thundering and the lightning struck some tree very close to the mansion and there was dead silence for some time then george you know got up and he looked for some matchstick and candle and lit a candle and there was some light again and <laughs> he sat down at the dining table and they both looked at each other and uh, shamsul prabhu thought this is my opportunity so he just blurted out george shila prabhupad wants me to ask you if you would be willing to help publish the krishna book it costs around 20000 us dollars george said how can i say no after that you <laughs> 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 could have just died <laughs> krishna wants me to do it i will do it so he did it and he didn't hold any grudge also against shamsundar prabhu so i don't know how i why i spoke that story <laughs> i forgot huh oh if you get the uh, ha huh. if you become dear satarati satarati salokantarati if you become dear to a pure devotee so this george harrison see let's try to understand this from the historical point of view lord krishna comes 5000 years ago and he speaks sarva dharman parityaja mam ekam sharanam rajam just surrender to me but no one knows how to surrender then he himself comes as shri chaitanya mahaprabhu and shikaya sharanagati bhagate ra pran he came and he taught what, what is sharanagati but mahaprabhu's message remained limited to bengal <coughs> and odisha and vrindavan see i am from maharashtra i was born and brought up in india but i'm telling you at the age of 18 when i met iskon devotees for the first time that's when i heard about chaitanya mahaprabhu rupa goswami raghunath das goswami i had never heard of them never i had heard of aurangzeb <laughs> <laughs> but i had never studied about chaitanya mahaprabhu this is the plight of our education system yes. hmm? so the knowledge of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu who is krishna himself remained limited to some parts of india not even the entire india now we <clears throat> are in the 1960s 
and this message needs to go because it is mahaprabhu's desire prithvi te yate acha nagar adigram sarvatra prachar hoy be morana so in shri lochandas thakur's chaitanya mangal there is a prediction that papi jab dharma chhade dure deshe jaye mora se napati bhakt jaibe ta thai at that time i will when when the sinful people they are settled all over the world in different countries at that time my senapati bhakta will go to all those countries to deliver them it is obvious who this senapati bhakta of lord chaitanya mahaprabhu is it is our beloved founder acharya his divine grace ac bhakti vedanta swami shri prabhupada so shri prabhupada is not a sadhana siddha or kripa siddha bhakta he is a nitya siddha shri prabhupada he was sent and shri prabhupada himself said confessed <laughs> that yes i was sent by krishna i didn't want to come but i did it for krishna so shila prabhupad was sent by krishna was sent by shri chaitanya mahaprabhu so shila prabhupad is a nitya siddha bhakta he is coming to take the message of chaitanya mahaprabhu all over the world gauravani pracharya but he is performing leela prabhupad prabhupad leela amrit prabhupad is performing leela so he appears to be a 70 year old man who has a mission given by his gurudev shila bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur prabhupad to take the message of mahaprabhu all over the world and now shila prabhupad finds himself all alone he doesn't have money for a ticket to fly to america he has to get on a ship which takes 38 days but not even a passenger ship not a cruise ship holland cruise ship no it was a cargo ship it was meant for cargo and shila prabhupad got on that ship jaladuta and came here shila prabhupad finds himself helpless <clears throat> somehow he ends up in the house of sali agarwal and gopal agarwal and they don't mind having prabhupad but you know they have their own lives they are not so interested in krishna consciousness and prabhupad has to stay in the vams here because their apartment is too small they have two kids prabhupad is allowed to come and cook there but prabhupad has to stay in the vams here and he requests sali agarwal can you invite some of your friends contact so i can preach i have come here not to stay in your house comfortably but to preach i have a mission from my guru there and she invites some friends and prabhupad writes in his diary to the four people came and one of them even bought my bhagavatam the three volume first canto this is prabhupad he is a is he is he just a ordinary devotee he has come from golopurindavan he is enjoying past times with chaitanya mahaprabhu and lord krishna in the spiritual world he has left that and he has come on this dirty earth planet in the dirty kali yuga and he is in the western world which is dirty very muchi people don't even wash themselves after answering nature's call <laughs> that's why amarnel would not learn swimming <laughs> you know I, i cannot get into the swimming pool people don't only don't, don't even wash themselves <laughs> there is no <even> tissue <laughs> it's muchi a brahman a brahman doesn't want to do this 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 kind of prabhu padrot on the jaladuta prabhu padrot on the jaladuta this is a place filled with ignorance and passion I have been after our Lord Prabhu. Come, I'll teach you swimming. You should know swimming. <laughs> <laughs> Not here. We we'll learn. You teach me Yamuna. <laughs> he is a Brahman. So Prabhupada comes here and finds himself helpless. Prabhupada leaves the sheltered house of Sali Agarwal, and he comes into the Bowery. Why? because for prabhupad the mission is more important than his personal comfort and safety and there is a 19 year old boy high on drugs attacking him in the middle of the it was a cold fall very cold attacks and prabhupad has to just pick up his typewriter and go out doesn't know where to go now somehow he has one phone number written down and that happens to be mike and jane <laughs> <laughs> who later on <laughs> become mukund go swami and janaki devi proba doesn't know where to go then somehow mike finds another apartment for proba to stay a safer place temporarily 
Prabhupada couldn't move in with them. They had cats. <laughs> so just a studio, not even a one bedroom apartment. So Prabhupada finds himself very helpless. Prabhupada is writing, you have read, he writes to uh, Singhania, Pratap something Singhania, I forgot his name. Huh? Pratap Singhania, industrialist in India, that sent me how much? $100,000. Send me $100,000. Someone was willing to sell Prabhupada a two story building in Long Island, which would have been the first. Is called temple only for hundred thousand dollars in 1965, 1966. But Prabhupada has no funds, so Prabhupada writes to Singhania. Singhania says, "Not hundred thousand dollars. I'll give you two hundred thousand dollars." These letters are there on Veda base. I may not remember the exact uh, amounts, but something like he said, "I'll give you double, but don't buy a pre-existing building and convert it into a Radha Krishna temple. You build a temple, beautiful." A proper temple, you build it. Singhania said, you build it nicely. Prabhupada said, I don't have the expertise and the time. I don't have any followers here. I'm all alone. His Holiness Satsuru Das Goswami writes, crying alone in the wilderness. Prabhupada, crying alone in the wilderness. I have no support. I cannot build a temple. This is a ready building. Let me just buy it. And Prabhupada says, it's got a nice basement where we can have a kitchen for Radha and Krishna. On the first floor, we get a big auditorium. We can have Katha there. And the deities can be on the top floor. Prabhupada is all these plans he's making. And he's writing to Singhania, please send some money. Singhania said, the exchange is, the government is not allowing me to send foreign exchange. Indira Gandhi said, money can come in India, money cannot leave India. So she, Indira Gandhi said, no. Before that, it was uh, Lal Bhadu Shastri. So Prabhupada wrote that Lal Bhattu Shastri is my friend. He received Bhagavatam from me. He wrote a favorable review and he is coming to America. I will meet him and get permission for the exchange. So Lal Bhattu Shastri was supposed to go to Russia and then come to US. But what happened in Russia? He died in Russia, never came to US. Prabhupada was disappointed. Then Indira Gandhi becomes the next prime minister. She says, no, money can enter India. Money cannot leave India. I will not allow this type of donation. Prabhupada writes to her, gets no response. Prabhupada writes to his god brothers, can you meet Indira Gandhi and convince her? But that was too far-fetched, not possible. So Prabhupada had an offer and then he could not get the money. $100,000 for our Prabhupada. Imagine, I think if it was today, we would just come together, <laughs> do a GoFundMe and <laughs> we would do anything for Srila Prabhupada. Hmm? Prabhupada is struggling for $19,000 to publish Krishna book. For 300 rupees, 300 dollars, Prabhupada could not go to Japan to make that presentation, Light of the Bhagavad. He had written such a beautiful book presentation and he couldn't go to deliver his lectures. So many reversals. Prabhupada is helpless. Imagine, he's from Golok Rindavan and he's helpless in this world. Just like Lord Ram. He's Supreme Lord, but he needs help to cross the bridge. You see? He's helpless and he's asking the monkey, Varar Sena, can you help me? I want to rescue my wife. Can you please help me? He's praying to Samudra Dev. Can you please give way? This is Leela, my dear friends. Here is Prabhupada from Golokurandavan finding himself utterly helpless. It doesn't end there. Then Srila Prabhupada, after he gets a no from his supporters in India, from the government of India, Prabhupada directly speaks to Mr. Hartman who owned that property, the three-story property in Long Island. He speaks to Mr. Hartland. He says, Mr. Hartland, I have only 40 rupees. <laughs> but you let me move in. I will start preaching and I will collect followers and then donations will come. And in the beginning, I will pay you rent. But within a year or two, I will have enough followers that I'll be able to buy the property. You have nothing to lose because you let me move in. I will pay you rent. Mr. Hartland said, no, Mr. Hartman said, no, I'm not interested. <laughs> then Prabhupada said, okay, I will pay the rent and I will pay the utility bills also. I will pay the electricity bill, the water bill, everything. You let me move in. You have nothing to lose. And eventually I'll buy, buy the property from you. Your property is just lying there like that. Please let me move in. Because I, I need a place where I can preach and make followers. 
Mr. Hartman said, actually, I don't want to sell the property to you. Even if you gave me cash down, everything, I will not sell you. He had a change of heart. He didn't have a heart. <laughs> Rajesh Ambaru tells the story, he says, Hartman had no heart. <laughs> he told Prabhupada, I will not give you the building. I don't want to sell you that building. So Prabhupada got no, no, no disappointment, disappointment, rejection, rejection from everywhere. Prabhupada was crying alone in the wilderness. He finds himself utterly helpless. <clears throat> Prabhupada's son, Vrindavan Chandra. So Prabhupada grew up in which city? Kolkata. He was a Kolkata boy. <laughs> there was, uh, I think it was in Detroit, I think, when Prabhupada bought that big uh, palace. It was probably that building or some other building. The fisherman. Fisherman. The fisherman yeah, building. Yeah, body by Fisher. He de um, developed the Cadillac. He developed the Cadillac? Yeah, he was a millionaire. Millionaire. So he had this big mansion and Prabhupada went and he quoted a very exorbitant price. And when Prabhupada was touring that place, Prabhupada was glorified. Oh, look at these arches. Our altar can be here. Oh, look at this. This can be the Prasadam Hall. Oh, this can be the Brahmachari Ashram. Prabhupada was pointing his cane and, you know, appreciating that building so much. The, the real estate fellow who was showing the building was convinced that Prabhupada really wants this building. So they came. The owner himself, it was for sale by owner kind of thing. The owner was there. So Prabhupada said, oh, this building is very nice. We could use it. Um, so how much do you give it for? So he quoted a price, very exorbitant price. And Prabhupada quoted like 10% of that. Prabhupada said, we have only this much. We will give it to you and uh, we will use it very nicely. We will keep it very nicely. And he was so mesmerized by Prabhupada's charm. He said, okay, Swamiji. He said, okay. And they said, immediately, let's sign the deal. And everything was signed and it was done. And then when Prabhupada left this fellow, what just happened? Was I, was I hypnotized or something? I gave it for 10% of the market value. What did I just do? It was not quite that low. No, I lived there in the Detroit Temple. It was Detroit Temple? My wife <laughs> so it was a very low price compared to what he had intended to sell. And then he was having such a seller's remorse. There's a buyer's remorse. But he was such a seller's remorse that he called his people and they were pulling out all the fixtures and chandeliers and fans. They were taking it away. I don't know if it was a Fisher property or some other property. But I was hearing it in Prabhupada memories. Okay, no, that's... Yeah. Same same property. Yeah. So he was just so Prabhupada just mesmerized him. So the, the point is that Prabhupada was such a huh, so then Prabhupada was asked, Prabhupada, how did you get that deal? It is impossible. How did you grab that deal? And Prabhupada said, Well, that fellow he found his match in this Kolkata boy. <laughs> That's how I remember. Prabhupada was a Kolkata boy. So he found his match in me. <laughs> So Prabhupada was born and brought up in Kolkata and he was brought up with so much love by his parents. You know the sacrifice of Rajni Devi, the mother of Srila Prabhupada? Anybody knows what she did to keep Prabhupada healthy? Because Prabhupada had got typhoid, so many kids were dying, there was plague and so many things were going on. She had taken a very special vow to keep Abhay Charan safe. Anybody knows? Ah, she would eat with her left hand. After Abhay was born, she used to start eating with her left hand. Until the time, Abhay would ha, grow up and ask, Mother, why are you eating with your left hand? Such love. So Prabhupada was brought up with such love. His father would bring sadhus, serve them. Veena Mahatpada Rajobhishekam. He would serve the sadhus and pray, please, please bless my son Abhay, that he becomes a pure devotee of Srimati Radharani. That's the only blessing. Gaur Mohande asked. Yes, Prabhuji. I don't understand. Why is she... Eat with your left hand. What, how is that? So, in the Indian culture, it's considered very moochy, yeah. very dirty to eat with the left hand. Yeah. So, for a cultured lady, it is a great austerity to do that. It is a great austerity. Yeah. And she was doing that austerity just to invoke some mercy and blessings for her son. It is unthinkable to eat with the left hand yeah. for someone who is from that, that culture, like, so she was doing that austerity. Isn't that sweet? So this is the loving environment that Srila Prabhupada was raised in. And that same Kolkata boy, in 1965, August, he comes to that same Kolkata, 
on the streets of which he was taken on a tonga by his father bought two plastic guns because he wanted two guns his mother would make kachoris his pockets were filled with kachoris father would buy him a rat have a rat. that same kolkata now prabhupak comes and there is no one to pick up his suitcase that same kolkata prabhupak has come he is going to board the jaldutha ship and there is no one to even pick up his suitcase it's an old man so prabhupak finds himself utterly helpless even though he is from the spiritual world and those disciples who help prabhupak they devotees like kamalini mata ji like apurva prabhu they gave up their youth see we have come from india i have come to enjoy so i can get a good quality of life here good standard of living these young boys and girls prabhupak's dancing white elephants and dancing black elephants like shila bhakti tirth maharaj they gave up their youth they gave up their education imagine if someone tells me give up your medical practice surrender your medical license and just join the temple these devotees actually did it devotees like apurva prabhu hari wo hari wo the sense gratification for which we come on h1b visa highly skilled workers <laughs> so you want to live the american dream what is the american dream one wife two kids two cars one should be a minivan <laughs> huh? and a dog that is the american dream we have come here to live the american dream well they gave up the american dream to serve someone they had just met shila prabhupad the best years of life when you get education when you work when you climb up the corporate ladder and make money so you get a high social security when you retire prabhupad disciples lost that because in the peak years of their life they were living in the temple without any job jayananda prabhu drove a taxi you know why in san francisco so because it gives me flexibility i can attend mangal aarti i can attend the morning program i can do all the service in the temple in the afternoon when devotees have some time i can go and drive and he would drive all night and every penny he got he gave to shila prabhupada every penny that jayanand prabhu got he gave to the temple he said there are devotees working full time but there is no source of income so let me earn money he was educated but he drove a taxi because of the flexibility i can work whenever there is time i can work at night if i take a 9 to 5 job i will be forced to work when there is service required in the temple so all day i will do service in the temple at night i will drive so that night the taxi drivers get double money also this is prabhupad disciples and he his he had a white shirt and a blue pant blue trouser it was torn and they were telling him come on get yourself a new no 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 this is prabhupad's money i cannot waste money on myself hmm. finally he was told you shoplift <laughs> so some devotee is encouraged him that you you come we'll take you shopping you have to buy he said no i cannot spend this money on myself so they kind of pushed him into it okay then just take it and jayanand prabhu said okay but not a shirt and a pant i'll just take one <laughs> any one so he actually shoplifted because he didn't want to spend prabhupada's money on himself and devotees are forcing him you need to get yourself a new trouser and a shirt <clears throat> he was caught and the police were called and jayanand prabhu was arrested and he was presented before the court before the judge and he looked like a, such a sadhu his face you have seen the photo of jayanand prabhu prabhu said he looks like mahaprabhu <laughs> <laughs> so saintly the judge was paid to even punish such a saintly gentleman he said why did you do such a thing why did you shoplift you are guilty or not guilty jayanand prabhu said guilty why did you do it jayanand prabhu said that my spiritual master shila prabhupad he came on a cargo ship and he has many temples now he had nothing he was living with the hippies at their mercy but now he has some temples but we have no money 
all my god brothers and god sisters are working full time serving in the temple and there is no proper source of income i am the only one who has a job i have my cab and my clothes were torn and everybody felt bad that i don't have proper clothes so to please them i agreed to get new clothes but i felt very guilty to spend the temple's money which he had earned to to spend the temple's money on myself so i did this abominable thing i'm sorry you can punish me the way you want i'm willing to accept any punishment i am guilty the judge had tears in his eyes when he heard this even that shop who had their expensive lawyers they were also in tears they said we drop the case <laughs> let him go and let him keep the pad also let him keep the trouser i don't want these were the disciples of shila prabhupada when jayaran prabhu had lymphoma he could not even put his hands down like this he had those big lymph nodes and he was still preparing the rath for the rath yatra when he was hospitalized he got a hospital bed in the hospital it's nice you press a button and it comes up it reclines the feet go up it's comfy <laughs> it's supposed to be comfortable because the patients are in pain and when the devotees went to meet jain and the prabhu they saw him on the floor in the hospital room they asked him prabhu why are you not on the bed jain and the prabhu said all my life i never had a comfortable bed like this first time in my life i have got a bed i want to offer it to prabhu pad and they saw prabhu pad small photo on the bed this is the level of shila prabhu pad's disciples my dear friends these are really the vanar sena these are really the vanar sena they helped lord ram when he really needed when he was most vulnerable when he was helpless when he had nobody these are the people who helped and now they are old they don't have much social security because they never had a real job in the world and as a society it is it is upon us whether we take care of them or we just okay we got 108 temples now we have grown it to 600 temples we've got all the books we've we've got it easy we are born with a silver spoon thanks to them but we will not care about them so it's up to us whether we care or we don't care shila prabhupad cares and because shila prabhupad cares krishna cares and whether we care for prabhupad disciples or not they are going back to god and because they helped prabhupad when prabhupad was all alone they helped prabhupad when prabhupad was crying alone in the wilderness if we help them we become glorious if we respect them if we serve them if we value them we become glorious if we don't we are the losers they are not going to lose because krishna is going to be there for them shila prabhupada is going to be there for them my guru maharaj has cried publicly while giving a class only twice once was when he was speaking about george harrison maharaj said that shamsundar prabhu told him shamsundar prabhu met george harrison just before his departure he had cancer and shamsundar prabhu told this and even i have heard this with my own ears directly from shamsundar prabhu shamsundar prabhu said George Harrison had become self-realized. Shamsun Prabhu met him. George Harrison had become self-realized, thanks to Prabhu Pad. At the time of his death, and there are so many examples like that. Have you read the book Simple for the Simple? Nobody has read that book Simple for the Simple. You have read? Shri Prabhu Pad's mercy is. unfathomable so here it is said that <clears throat> one can this bhagavatam there are many processes to understand the absolute truth but the absolute truth is only revealed to one who has attained the mercy of a great devotee somehow we have to become dear to the great devotees 
in the purport shila prabhupad writes actual knowledge of transcendental bliss can be bestowed upon anyone by a pure devotee anyone vedeshu durlabham adurlabham atma bhaktav one cannot attain the perfection of spiritual life simply by following the directions of the vedas one has to approach a pure devotee anya abhilashita shunyam jnana karmaadi anavratam by the grace of such a pure devotee one can understand the absolute truth krishna and one's relationship with him this is called self realization propaj is defining see someone read loudly by the one can understand krishna this is called self realization to understand krishna and what is my eternal relationship with krishna propaj is writing there a materialistic person sometimes thinks that simply by executing pious activities and remaining at home one can understand the absolute truth that is denied in this verse nor can one understand the absolute truth simply by observing the rules and regulations of brahmacharya celibacy one only has to serve the pure devotee i repeat prabhupad ji writes one only has to serve the pure devotee that will help one understand the absolute truth without fail sure shot method to get krishna just become dear to a pure devotee just serve a pure devotee <clears throat> quiz question which verse in bhagavad gita is repeated twice which phrase it is repeated twice right why because it is essential it is very important man mana bhav man bhakto madhya ji mam namaskuru this is a very essential instruction that's why it is repeated twice <clears throat> which instruction is repeated twice in shrimad bhagavata it is this prabhu is right this this instruction vina mahat pad rajo bishekam to smear one's body with the dust of the lotus feet so in bhagavad gita what is repeated become a devotee of krishna man mana bhav an bhakto and what is the <coughs> next step after that to become a devotee of the devotees of krishna so if you go to prahlad maharaj's prayers 7.5.32 that verse is similar to this verse <coughs> so what is the instruction here mahat pada rajobhishekam that do abhishek with the dust of the lotus feet of a pure devotee Seven five thirty two. Now go to seven five thirty two. Pralas Tuti. Seventh canto, fifth chapter, verse thirty two. Pralas Maharaj is praying to Lord Narasimha Dev. Naishamati stavad uru kramangrim. Naishamati stavad uru kramangrim. Special anartha pagamo yadartha. instruction is repeated twice in shrimad bhagavatam just like manmana bhavamad bhakti is repeated twice in bhagavad gita so how important it is to take shelter of the dust of the lotus feet of a pure devotee 
राहु गणयता तपसा नयाति नाचे जया निर्वपणा गृहाद्वा छंदसानय भजलाग्नि सूर्य वीना महत पादर जो भिषेक लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड द हार्ट ऑफ जड़ भरत वाई जड़ भरत इज स्पीकिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर वर्स many many years ago there was a great king called king nabi and his wife was i think meru devi they prayed to the supreme lord vishnu with the help of so many priests and brahmanas they performed a yagna that please give us a son a child just like you and lord vishnu said there is no one like me <laughs> i am asamurdha no one is equal to me no one is greater than me So all right, I will become your child, and then the Supreme Lord became the son of Maharaj Nabi and Meru Devi, and his name was Maharaj Rishabadev. The Jain religion, Jain Dharma, one of the founders of the Jain Dharma is Maharaj Rishabadev. If you study the Jain religion, one of the founders of their religion their tradition is maharaj rishabadev who is none other than lord krishna even in the buddhist religion buddhism lord buddha is also an incarnation of krishna keshava dhrita buddha sharira jay jagadish hare so maharaj rishabadev was the son of maharaj nabi and meru devi and he got married to shri jayanti devi who was also very qualified devotee and they had 100 sons he personally trained his 100 sons in krishna consciousness eldest was maharaj bharat maharaj rishabdev made bharat the king of the world and took sanyas and went to the he became avudhut we are talking about avuduts he became avudhut and he wandered the earth completely self realized <clears throat> bharat maharaj is the son of the supreme personality of god here maharaj rishabdev he was personally trained by his father who is the supreme lord and he became the next king and this earth planet is named after him bharat after bharat maharaj following the varnashram system he also took to the renounced order of life gave the kingdom to his children and went to a holy place in the himalayas where the gandaki river flows where shaligram shila is found and did tapasya there now he had received superb instructions from maharaj rishabdev they are there in the preceding chapters of the fifth canto and he was bharat maharaj was could not be defeated by maya he was very pakka he had reached the stage of bhav when he would worship his shaligram shila when he would chant the mantras his hair would stand on and tears would flow from his eyes he had reached the stage of bhav he had spiritual emotions so there are three things that distract us from the spiritual path and all devotees should guard against these three things their distractions kanaka kamini kirti kanaka means money kamini means women attraction to the opposite sex and kirti means glorification i will share something confidential this i heard from shila prabhupad's disciple brahma tirtha prabhu bob cohen perfect questions perfect answers yes pramatirtha prabhu personally told me this in a private conversation but i'm sharing this because these are jewels from shila prabhupad and uh, they may be misunderstood but please don't misunderstand 
understand the heart of Śrīla Prabhupāda. He is our loving father. When Śrīla Prabhupāda told Brahma Tirtha Prabhu, my Indian disciples have to specially guard against money, the temptation of money. He said, my Indian disciples will fall down because of money. And my Western disciples will fall down because of women. And who are we? We are both. <laughs> we are Indian also and we are in the West. And even those devotees who are in India, they are Westernized. <laughs> the whole world is Westernized. So we have to be careful with these two things. Attraction to the opposite sex and money. There should be total transparency as far as money is concerned. We have to be very careful. And also we should man maintain gender etiquette. In the name of being modern, we should not forget gender etiquettes. Because Srimad Bhagavatam teaches Swasra, what is that verse? Uh, Swasra Duhitra uh, Matra Swasra Matra Duhitra Va Na Vivakta Sano Bhavet Balava Nindriya Grama Vibram Sanabhi Karshati. That Matra Swasra Duhitra Va. Matra means mother, Swasra means sister, and Duhitra means daughter. See the connection of Sanskrit and English. Matra starts with ma, mother, Swasra sister, Dhuitra daughter. Matra, Swasra, Dhuitra va, na vivakta asano bhavet. We should not sit close to them also. Why? Balavan indriya grama. The senses are uncontrolled. Vidvam sam api karshati. Even a vidwan person who knows the scripture can get attracted. So we have to be very careful. Then Prabhupada said 50% hall should be for my Vaishnavi disciples, 50% should be for the Prabhus. So this gender etiquette should be maintained. It is for our own protection. If Vishwamitra Muni can get attracted, we are very insignificant. So we have to be always humble, always careful. So Prabhupada said to be careful about Kamini, means attraction to the opposite sex, Kanaka, money. And the third one is Kirti. This is subtle, very subtle. What is the meaning of Kirti? Glorification, appreciation. Fame, prestige, making followers. Looking, how many people have joined the Zoom? Hmm. Why only? Why only so many? Hey, you didn't go live on YouTube. We should go. <laughs> so we have to be very careful. Kanaka Kamini Kirti. These things will take us away from Krishna. We will get claps. We will get likes. We will get followers. We will get subscribers. We will not get Krishna. What is the use if we don't get Krishna? If we don't get Prabhupada? So we have to be very careful. Bharat Maharaj was Pakka devotee. If Apsara came in front of Bharat Maharaj in the Himalayas where he was alone doing bhajan, he would not look. He was very Pakka. He was a devotee. He was worshipping Shaligram Shalai, he was chanting the names of Krishna. He was having divine emotions. He would not have fallen. If someone came and gave him money, I have already left that. <laughs> I left the whole kingdom and came here. Why will I be attracted to money? What about Kirti? I had Kirti, I had glorification also. I was the king. I had so much respect. I gave that up also. So Kanaka Kamini Kirti could not have distracted Bharat Maharaj. Maya Devi knew this. Hare Krishna. She still got him. See how careful we have to be. She still got him. Using a good quality of compassion. You don't have time to discuss the pastime, but you all know. How he got attracted to the deer. Now just process this for a minute. The son of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Bharat Maharaj, son of Rishabh Dev Maharaj, Bhagwan Rishabh Dev's son, Bharat Maharaj, the son, direct son of the Supreme Lord, who was personally trained by the Supreme Lord, who was so cultured, who had reached the stage of Adho Shraddha, Ta Sadhu Sangha, Bhajana Kriya, Anartha Nivritti, Nishtha, Ruchi, Asakti, Bhav. And now he is at the threshold of Prem. One more step and he will be in Prema Bhakti. And he becomes a deer in his next life. Not even a human birth. Just process this for me. He is a son of the Supreme Lord. Why these stories are there in Srimad Bhagavad? Not to discourage us. Oray! 
Bharat Maharaj fell down. What hope do I have? <laughs> that is not Srimad Bhagavatam. After a Srimad Bhagavatam class, we should come out enthusiastic and happy and hopeful. Srimad Bhagavatam gives everlasting hope. That Bharat Maharaj had to accept the body of a deer because yam yam vapi smaran bhavam tajantyante kalevaram tam tam evaiti kaunteya sadatat bhava bhagata. Whoever we think of, that we will attain in our next life. He thought of his deer because he thought, I am the protector of that deer. Bharat Maharaj in his illusion forgot that Krishna is the protector. Karta aham iti manyate. That is the biggest mistake when we think I am the doer. Were there not other deer in the forest who were living happily? <laughs> who was protecting them? Bharat Maharaj is thinking, I am the protector of this deer. This deer cannot live without me. Is that not an illusion? He would be worshipping a Shaligram Shila with fruit offerings. The deer would come and start eating those fruits. And he would say, Aww, it's okay. It's okay. I'll get more fruits. It's okay. He got distracted from his bhajan. And at the time of death, you th we think of that person who is our shelter. His whole focus was on that deer. And he thought of the deer, became a deer. But see the beauty of bhakti. Even in a deer body, he had full remembrance of his previous life's bhajan. And he now he knows, why did I fall down? Tanaka Kamini Kirti could not have pulled me down, could not have distracted me. But still Maya tricked me and got me down. Gave me a knockout punch. And I was defenseless. I was defenseless because I did not have a circle of devotees around me to protect me. If there were devotees, Bharat Prabhu, come on. You are a bhajananandi. What are you doing? Let that deer go. You do bhajan. But there was nobody to tell him that. And Maya Devi capitalized on that weakness. He was not. Why did Prabhupada start the society, International Society for Krishna Consciousness? Prabhupada could have said, distribute my books, read them at home, chant 16 rounds in your homes, worship the deity in your homes. Why International Society for Krishna Consciousness? Why we have so many temples? We cannot do it ourselves. We need each other, my dear friends. We need each other. Bharat Maharaj is teaching us this. And he had learned it the hard way. He had been knocked out. And he knew exactly why he got the knockout punch. Because he didn't have the protection of devotees. He knew the value of association. He knew the value of being under the shelter of a pure devotee. He had that hardcore realization. And in the body of the deer, he decided, now I will not fall down. This life I did so much bhajan, but still Maya got me. Now I will not give Maya a chance. He only lived near the ashrams of sadhus as a deer, never associated with any doe, any female deer. He remained a brahmachari. He only ate the Mahaprasad of the, Bhagavatam says this. He only ate the Mahaprasad of the sadhus all his life as a deer. Stayed near the rishis. Never went anywhere. And then he becomes Jad Bharat. See the beauty of Bhakti. He is a completely self-realized Paramhamsa and he is born in a Brahman family as Jad Bharat. But now he doesn't preach. He knows how dangerous Maya is. Now he doesn't display his bhakti. Just internally completely absorbed. He's a Udhut. Like his father became a Udhut. Now he's following Mahajana and Gatha Sapanta. Maharaj Rishabdev had become a Udhut. Jadabharat also became a Udhut. His father was a Brahman. He would say, come on, I'll teach you the Brahma Gayatri Mandra. Say, oh. Mm -hmm. He would not get it. He would not get the mantra. Brahma Gayatri mantra. Srila Prabhupada gave Gayatri Diksha to Jayananda Prabhu. Sometime later, Tamal Krishna Maharaj got Brahmin Diksha. And Jayananda Prabhu asked Tamal Krishna Maharaj, Maharaj, um, do you mind if I come with you to hear the Gayatri mantra again from Prabhupada? Because I can't get the pronunciation. I can't get the pronunciation right. Tamal Krishna said, yeah, sure, you can come. So Tamal Krishna Maharaj goes for his second initiation and Jayanand Prabhu, who is senior to him, is with him. Prabhupada says, yes, why are you here? Uh, Prabhupada, I want to hear the mantra again. I kind of forgot the pronunciation. All right. Tamal Krishna Maharaj says, for half an hour, Prabhupada was teaching the mantras, Gayatri mantras, to Jayanand Prabhu again and again. 
and he still couldn't get it <laughs> he was mispronouncing finally prabhupad said forget it you will never get it jayananda but you know what no matter how you chant it krishna and radharani will still accept it because you are so sincere <laughs> He heard Mr. Samal Krishna Maharaj told the story. So Jada Bharat pretended that he could not memorize even the Brahma Gayatri mantra as a son of a Brahman. He would not change his Brahmin thread on Ekadashi. His bra- white Brahmin thread became black. Bhagavatam describes all this. Father told him the rules of cleanliness. So you go, you answer nature's call, you wash your rear end, then you wash your hands, you take a bath. and then you come okay papa he would go he would take a bath he would answer nature's call and then come <laughs> <laughs> he pretended to be completely dumb an intelligent fellow why because he wanted no kanaka no kamini no kirti and internally he was completely absorbed in the association of sadhus that he got in his dear life remembering their instructions remembering their activities completely in samadhi internally father was on his death bed jada bharat's father was on his death bed and he was a karmakandi brahman jada bharat could have preached to his father did he his father died in front of him He was just sitting, Jada, like a dull fellow, just sitting. And father was thinking of his son at the time of death. My dear son, what will happen to him? His step brothers are so intelligent; they are doing so many pujas, earning so much money. But what will happen to this son, Jada Bharat? Father died in that anxiety, thinking of Jada Bharat, <laughs> who is a paramamsa. <laughs> <laughs> Then Jada Bharat's ill treatment started. The only person who loved him was his father. Now father is gone. Now we have got step brothers. They ill-treated him. They would give him decomposed fungus, laga hua grains, petrified, dirty, spoiled grains. They would give him to eat. They would eat first class rice, and he would eat. He would eat. They would tell him, "Okay, stand in the agriculture and feel like a scarecrow," and he would stand all day like this, trying to scare them. But internally, completely absorbed in Krishna. That was Jada Bharat. Never preached to anybody. And now there is Maharaj Rahugana, who is the king of the world. <laughs> He is the king. Who was the king of the world? Bharat Maharaj. This whole world is named after him, Bharat Varsha. That Bharat Maharaj became a deer, then became Jada Bharat, and he is standing like a scarecrow. He has got a strong body, standing like this all day. and the king of the world now many years have passed is maharaj rahugana and he is a disciple of maharaj rahugana is a disciple of supreme lord kapil dev and he is going to the ashram of kapil dev to hear from his guru going on a palanquin this is the king and there are four strong people carrying the palanquin but one of them calls in sick <laughs> sick leave So they are one person short, and they find this strong, strong guy standing in the agricultural field like this. He said, "Okay, you come. You be the palanquin carrier. You look nice and strong. You are a good fit. Come on." So he said, "Okay, whatever, whatever people tell me, I'll do." So he starts carrying palanquin, and there are ants, and he doesn't want to step on them. So he is moving, stopping. Let the ants go. i will stop i'll not step over them also it's disrespectful to step over some so he just stops and the other three people go ahead and the king is oh what what is happening the king says you look strong but you are very jad you are very foolish you don't even how to carry a palanquin it doesn't require a mba degree or a phd to carry palanquin just carry it just walk synchronously you can't do that he doesn't say anything they keep walking again there are some ants again he stops <laughs> and the king shakes moves almost falls off he says okay now that is enough let me come down the king gets down and says i can give you the death punishment right now for inconveniencing me you don't understand how to carry a palanquin you fool 
Jadavarat says, is your inconvenience more important than the life of those poor ants? You think your convenience is more important than their life? For you it is inconvenience, for them it is death. Jadavarat. Ravagalam understood that this is a person of substance. He is deep. Let me listen. Jadavarat continues. He says, Maharaj, you said that you are the king and I am the palanquin carrier. It is possible that previously I was the king and you are the palanquin carrier. See, speaking from realization, because he was there, he has done that. He has been carried in the palanquin. See how this world is, my dear friends. We should be always very humble. We don't know who is who. Those hippies who are wearing dirty clothes and doing drugs and walking into 26-7 Avenue, they may be pure devotees today. They may be Diksha Gurus today. You don't know who is what. But if someone saw them that time in 1967, they would say, ah, who are these people? And now they have got Vaishnava Tilak, they are wearing Kanti, they have been chanting for 50 years. Hare Krishna Mahamantra. And those people who judge them, where are they? <laughs> so we don't know this world is inconceivable. We always have to be humble. Jada Bharat tells him, so why does Jada Bharat preaches? Why does Jada Bharat preach to Maharaj Rahuvana? So far he never preached, but now he's preaching. He got the perfect person, like the surrender person whom he should preach so that, or maybe he's the king of the world. That's why whatever he would do, people will follow. Yeah. Or if not, that would Wonderful. What did Prabhupada do? Chasing the rhinos. <laughs> Go for the big fish. Hmm? That's why, yes. Father, he was not worried. Because Narsim Bhagavan says 21 generations are delivered. <laughs> he was not worried about his father. But Rahugan, yes. He was the rhino. <laughs> Chasing rhinos with the Swami. <laughs> So he went for the big fish and preached in such a way that it is there in the period of Srimad Bhagavatam and thousands and thousands and thousands of years later we are still reading. So he is telling Maharaj Rahugana, you are sitting on the palanquin alone, don't do that. Surround yourself with the dust of the lotus feet of the pure devotees. Be like Ambarish Maharaj. It's very lonely up there. <laughs> I was also lonely up in the Himalayan mountains. Don't be lonely. Don't be alone. Surround yourself with devotees. Surround yourself with devotees. I remember in the 2005 South India Yatra, there were I think 4,000 devotees. And my Guru Maharaj, he was receiving complaints. That Maharaj, for Tirupati Balaji Darshan, we had to wait 7 hours. Anyway, it is crowded. And now we are 4,000 of us. <laughs> You know, prasadam is delayed, there are lines for the restrooms, lines for prasadam. This management is horrible. Where is Gaurang Prabhu? Call him. <laughs> he was getting numerous complaints. And Maharaj said in a lecture, the other day I was with a devotee who has come from Turkey. And he was saying that Maharaj, there is not a single devotee in the city where I live. <coughs> the nearest temple is in some other country. I yearn to see someone with a Vaishnava Tilak. I yearn to see someone with a Tulsi Kanti Mala. Someone who I can say, Hari Bol! Hare Krishna! I yearn for that opportunity, Maharaj. And Maharaj was looking at us and saying, And all of you, you are complaining that devotees are stepping on your toes. You are complaining that you are being squished and uh, squeezed by devotees. He said, this is your supreme fortune that you are surrounded by devotees. Here are people yearning to see one devotee <coughs> and you are surrounded by all devotees chanting 16 rounds, following four relative principles who have come here on Yatra to hear Harikatha and take shelter of the Dham. You should be blissful. This is the greatest fortune. Please don't complain. So we should re realize our good fortune that we have got this wonderful Sangha and we should value it 
and take to Krishna consciousness very sincerely, very sweetly. Then this process works. It really works. We should judge our spiritual progress by how attached we are to the holy name and to the Vaishnavas. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took little bit from all the four sampradayas, isn't it? He took something from Sripad Ramanujacharya Sampradaya. What was that? It was Vaishnav Seva. Because there are incredible examples of Vaishnav Seva in the Sri Sampradaya. Kuresh, Dasharathi. Dasharathi one day asked a question to Sripad Ramanujacharya. Can you explain the most important verse of Bhagavad Gita? 18.66 Sarva Dharman Paritya Mahamekam Sharanam Raja Aham Tvam Saro Pape Bhyo Mokshe Shami Mahasucha He was asking a question in a Bhagavatam like this how we are sitting asked a question just then a lady comes in with a child and Shripad Ramanujar says Hare Krishna how are you? She said I am very sad my mother-in-law ill treats me is that common? <laughs> my mother-in-law ill treats me. My father-in-law ill treats me. My husband also doesn't like me. I am just overburdened with work. They make me wash their clothes. I have to cook for them. Then I have to wash the dishes. I have to clean the house. All day long I am working. I have no time for Bhajan Gurudev. I am miserable. Shripad Ramanujan said, what do you need? I need a servant. Shripad Ramanujan looks at the person who asked the question, Dasharati. Dasharati, he is your servant. Take him with you. <laughs> the one who asked, Sarva Dharman Parit. <laughs> you go. Dasharati, you go. Yes, Mataji, you have found a servant. Take him home. And she just walks up, goes, leaves with Dasharati. A servant. For one year, Dasharati, who was a Mahabhagavat, very great devotee. He was humbly serving in the house of these atheists. Now this lady was a devotee. She was the daughter of Mahapurana, actually. She was the daughter of Shripad Ramanacharya's guru, one of his gurus. Mahapurana's daughter. But her family members are atheists. They were crooked fellows. And Dasharati is their menial servant for one full year. One day he goes to the Kaveri to fetch some water. And their Bhagavatam class is going on. And the 10th canto has been discussed. And the Bhagavad Kathakar is not able to remember a verse. <laughs> and he's scratching, what was that? In those days, they didn't have Veda base. You could just. <laughs> he's like fumbling for words, and Dasharati calls out. Those. He recites the whole verse in the perfect meter, in the perfect melody. And everybody, what? We thought you were a, just a menial servant in the house of that girl, that lady. Hare Krishna. The Kathakar says, can you explain that verse also? Ah, he gives such a beautiful, perfect explanation of that verse. That Kathakar says, you must be Dasharati. I remember you. You are with Shripad Ramanujachari. What are you doing here? Filling water from the Kaveri for someone. He goes and tells the father-in-law of that lady. Do you know who you have as a menial servant in your house? It is the famous Dasharati, the direct disciple. Of Shripad Ramanujacharya. <coughs> says, what? I didn't know that. Okay, you can go. <laughs> Thank you for serving us for a year. You are free to go. And then he comes back to Shripad Ramanujacharya. And then Shripad Ramanujacharya embraces him. And from heart to heart, the full purport, the full meaning of Sarvadharan Paritya comes into the heart of Dasharati. This is our parampara. We just want to please a pure devotee. How much Shri Narottam Das Thakur struggled to get the mercy of Shri Loktan Goswami? We'll discuss that in the evening. I was going to discuss it now, but we are, I think, way up. I don't have my watch. We are way above time. So we'll stop here. But let's keep this in our heart that every devotee is special and the perfection of our life is to somehow or the other become dear to the devotees. So let's try to be dear to all the devotees. That is the safest position. This is the realization of Jada Bharat. What is the safest position? It is mentioned. Srila Prabhupada explains. Please listen carefully. I'll, I'll end with this. Very deep. The safest position in this universe is to be in the association of devotees in the mood 
of das das anudas and to try our best to let everyone else think that we are fools to be in the association of devotees not that oh i am a kathakar all of you have come to hear from me no that is not association that is not protection to be in the association of devotees to serve them in the mood of servant of the servant and to try our best so that devotees will think that i am a fool that is that is jal bharat that is the safest position his holiness i'll conclude with the words of his holiness niranjan swami maharaj niranjan swami maharaj says we should pray before every class that we forget the verses that we are supposed to quote but someone from the audience prompts and reminds us so the hari katha is not compromised and we remain humble <laughs> how beautiful is that that we depend on the devotees for our hari katha let everyone think i am a fool <laughs> of course devotees will not think that a humble soul is a fool but let everyone think i am a fool and let me serve all the devotees that is the safest position in this whole world hare krishna shila prabhupad ki granthara shrimad bhagavatam ki nitai gaur premanand ji hare krishna are there any questions or comments yes hare krishna prabhu so we heard so much about the dust of the lotus feet of the lotus to, to roll in it and to get it can you say more about that Hare Krishna. it's not always easy to amazing <coughs> his grace apura prabhu has brought up a very nice point <coughs> apura prabhu is saying can you elaborate on what it means mahat pad rajabhishek what it means to get the dust of the lotus feet of a vaishnava our acharyas have explained it in very simple words to get the dust of the lotus feet of vaishnavas doesn't just literally mean to take dust doesn't just literally mean it it means the dust the literally the dust from the feet of a devotee is very powerful no doubt but the real meaning of the dust of the lotus feet of a pure devotee means to follow their instructions if we are following the instructions of our gurudev if we are following the instructions of shila prabhupad we have the dust of their lotus feet because we are residing at their lotus feet we have taken shelter at their lotus feet by following their instructions by living our life according to their instructions then we are in the dust of the lotus feet of purity what their instructions is that okay hare krishna is there one more? yes mataji Seva bhav from the Ramana. Mm. What about the other? Thank you for asking that. I forgot. I was going to complete that. Shema, thank you. Hare Krishna. From the Shri Sampradaya, we got Vaishnava Seva. From the Madhva Sampradaya, we got the standards of deity worship. Because Udupi Krishna is worshipped so nicely. So we got deity worship from Shri Pad Madhva Charya Sampradaya. From the Rudra Sampradaya, in which Shri Vishnu Swami, Shri Pad Vallabh Charya came. we got varaj nishtha because they have their main centers at govardhan hmm? so we got varaj varaj nishtha from them <clears throat> of course there is varaj nishtha in our sampradaya also but that is the main teaching that he took two actually from each sampradaya but the main thing from the hmm, rudra sampradaya is varaj nishtha because they are very attached to govardhan you will see this uh, followers of shripad vallabh acharya they to- took over the service of gopal ji shripad madhavendra puri is gopal ji they took over the service and now they are worshiping at nadwara so gopal so varaj nishtha and from the kumar sampradaya we got the uh, one pointed shelter of shrimati radharani sanaka sanatana varnita charite radhe jay jay madhava daite in the kumar sampradaya the four kumaras they have sung the glories of shrimati radharani so one pointed shelter of shrimati radharani shelter of the holy dham high standards of deity worship and vaishnav seva these are the four things we got from the four sampradayas mahaprabhu took the essence hare krishna is that okay hare krishna prabhu there is one question from online is that okay to yeah yeah 
This is from Keshman Rao, Ramra Prabhu, and he is asking this. What's the difference between blaspheming and correcting someone? And how do I know if this correction is required even in my Even in myself? Yeah. So the question is from Kesho Prabhu. Uh, what is the difference between blasphemy and giving correction? Correcting someone. Correcting someone and blaspheming someone. What is the difference? And how do we know that correction is required for us? Hare Krishna. I have heard from my Guru Maharaj the definition of blasphemy. Vaishnava criticism. Shri Radhanath Swami Maharaj says that if we talk about a devotee in a way that the person who is listening loses respect or reduces the respect that the person has for that particular Vaishnava, that is Vaishnava Parat. That is blasphemy. For example, if I am speaking to His Grace Apura Prabhu about an XYZ devotee, you know Apura Prabhu, that XYZ Prabhu, he did like this, like this, like this. If I speak in a way that by hearing my words, the respect that Apura Prabhu has for that Vaishnava will diminish. That is Vaishnava Prabhu. We have no right to do that. That is Vaishnava Prada. So we should speak in a way where devotees feel inspired and we, we don't criticize. That is that is criticism. To focus on the negative aspects of a Vaishnava, to point out the faults, Dosh Kirtan. Instead of doing Hari Kirtan, we do Dosh Kirtan. We speak about the faults of others. That is blasphemy. To speak about the faults of others. And in Chaitanya Charitamrita also, and Chaitanya Bhagavad also, this is mentioned. Mahaprabhu says, this is like drinking poison. If we criticize devotees, we are drinking poison. So what is the antidote? With that same mouth, we have to glorify the Vaishnavas. As far as feedback is concerned, <coughs> Lord Krishna helps us understand that in Bhagavad Gita, I think it is the 17th chapter, Anudvega Karam Vakyam Satyam Priya Hitam Chayat Swadhyaya uh, Abhyasanam Chayva Vangmayam Tapa Uchchate Our speech should be um, <clears throat> It should be Satya, it should be the truth It should be Hita It should be for the benefit of the person And it should be spoken in a way that it is pleasing Feedback also should be given in a pleasing way Priya, Priya means pleasing <clears throat> So what is that verse? Anudvega Karam Vakyam Satyam Priya Hitam Chaya Anudveg, Udveg means to agitate someone. Anudveg means not agitating. So we should speak, we should give feedback in a way that it is not agitating to the person. The right person should give the feedback. Someone who has a relationship of authority should give feedback. We should not give feedback to someone who is senior to us. That is a breach of Vaishnava etiquette. One should not. Therefore, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu never gave a constructive feedback to Ramchandra Puri. Why? Even though Ramjana Puri was doing wrong, Mahaprabhu never corrected him because he was the god brother of his Gurudev. He was Ishwar Puri's Gurudev. So he, Mah Mahaprabhu kept quiet. So one should not give a feedback to someone who is not in a position of authority. But Mahaprabhu gave feedback to Kaliya Krishna Das. He told him, you, this time I saved you, next time I will not save you. And as soon as he came back to Jagannath Puri, handed him over to his Gurudev, Nityananda Prabhu. Correct him, rectify him. So we should give feedback to those with whom we have a relationship of authority. That is our seva. Not authority means we are superior, but as a service, we are in that position. Only those people should give feedback. Not everyone else. Uh, His Holiness Kadambakaran Maharaj recently wrote a very nice article. Anybody read that? About this, exact the same thing. Maharaj said we should have a society where we trust each other, where we appreciate and encourage each other. Not a society where everybody is pointing out faults. In the name of giving feedback, in the name of giving constructive feedback, we are just pointing out, Prabhu, you should not sit like this. You should sit cross-legged in a Bhagavatam class. Prabhu, you should not do like this. You should be like, all the time if you are just giving feedback, feedback. Because, oh, I am I'm a well-wisher, I am giving constructive. No. Only a person in the position of authority should give feedback when the person is res receptive. If someone is asking for feedback, we should give. So once I gave a class and I asked Amarinda Prabhu, Prabhu, can you please give me feedback? He was not saying anything. As Prabhu, can you please give me feedback? <coughs> then he started. He said, Prabhu, because you are asking, I am saying. And one, I thought I gave a great class. <laughs> like I always think. And he told me, 
Prabhuji, you are too fast. Prabhuji, you are screaming in the microphone. <laughs> Prabhuji, you are quoting verses and not explaining them. Prabhuji, your class had no structure. <laughs> you were all over the place. <laughs> Thank you, Prabhuji. I'm so glad I asked you. I thought I gave a great class. Because devotees are so happy when I ended. <laughs> So we should ask for feedback and only when someone is receptive, feedback should be given. That's when the heart is fertile to receive because feedback is a gift. Feedback is not criticism. Feedback is a gift. So like that. And when do we need, how do we know whether we need uh, correction or not? We always do. We always do. Bharat Maharaj needed it. Bilo Mangal Thakur needed it. So we always need it. Hare Krishna. Anything? Yes, Mother. So this was such valuable instruction about fault finding, and um, I'm really going to endeavor to um, give it up. But like, as far as diminishing others, um, so so that you know, when you speak to someone, their appreciation goes down. It's usually done with somebody who also has bad opinion of them. Then you could see each other. Like, yeah, right. And and she did this to me. And, she said this to me, and yeah, and then you should go back and forth criticizing. So, um, so yeah, and then like if we know that others don't want to hear criticism or never speak it in front of them, then it's usually we speak it to others who are critical. But um, such good um, instruction, I'm really going to endeavor. But um, also, you had mentioned in the very beginning of the class about you know the different stages of devotees and how even in our mind we find fault, but don't we have to do this to an extent to avoid um, association that may not be nourishing to our Bhakti people? Hare Krishna. Wonderful. Everybody was able to hear, Mataji? <clears throat> so again, I have heard this. Once Radhe Prabhu asked this question to my Guru Maharaj, I am simply repeating what I heard. The, the question was <clears throat> that uh, we should not criticize others but isn't we should not find faults in others but isn't it true that we also need to differentiate between what is the right standard and what is not so that we can choose our association don't we need to have that discrimination am i saying it correct yeah so what i have heard from my guru maharaj uh, is Srila Radhana Swami Maharaj said there are always going to be three types of devotees. There are always going to be three types of devotees. One is devotees who are good examples. Like Srila Prabhupada, the perfect example. Like Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Like Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Srila Gaur Kishota Swabaji Maharaj, Srila Chagannath Das Maharaj. All our Acharyas, they are Acharyas, they teach by example. So their example is the light for us, the guiding light for us. The first type of devotees and all the other pure devotees who have successfully followed Srila Prabhupada and are following Srila Prabhupada. They are representing Srila Prabhupada and the Parampara. They are the good examples. That is the first category of devotees. Devotees who are good examples. There will be a second category of devotees who will be the majority of devotees around us. They are devotees who endeavor to be good examples, but they have difficulty. They try to be good examples but they have difficulties along the way. Sometimes they are good examples, sometimes they are not. And this is going to be the vast majority of devotees around us, the second category. They try to be good examples, but they have difficulty. And the third category is devotees who have ulterior motive. They don't even want to be good examples and they are just not good association. They are all always blaspheming, always negative, after spending time with them, we come out so depressed. Oh my God, <laughs> I think I was better off before I became a Bhakta. <laughs> so that is the third type of devotees. They have no good intention. They are serial fault finders, blasphemers. So third category devotees, we avoid. We avoid them. Second category of devotees, whenever we see good example in them, we appreciate that. We feed that. We appreciate that. We encourage that. And where we see deviation, where we see deviation from the standard of behavior, where we see them struggling, having difficulty coming to the right standard, we pray for them. We appreciate the good in them and we pray for their difficulties that may Guru and Krishna help them. 
at the same time we keep a protective layer around us shielding us from that contamination because we don't want to get that contamination we don't want that infection so we take precautions but we associate with their those qualities which are good examples and we keep 100% of our attention on the first category of devotees who are the right examples they always inspire us they always show us the right path we keep them as our focus just like when we are driving it may be a three lane highway interstate our focus is on our lane if there is a car in front of us that slow down we slow down if there is an accident in the emergency lane we don't we don't keep looking <laughs> dush we will have an accident so we don't want to focus on the faults of others 911 is there to help them the guru parampara is there they will come to the rescue we can we can make a 911 call quickly and say hey please help near the exit they need help so if someone needs help we can all send our prayers <laughs> send our prayers but we don't put our focus there we don't put our faith there if we put our faith where the example isn't right we will be disturbed and we will be disappointed so we have to be very careful where we put our faith our faith is in prabhupada's example our faith is in shila bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur prabhupada's example our faith is in the example of the pure devotees like jayananda prabhu and there are so many more <coughs> so our faith is in the pure devotees in the second category we keep a protective layer but we definitely encourage and we associate with the good examples there whenever there is a good example but if there is a deviation if anything is different from what prabhu pat taught mm -mm, we don't want that as long as you are speaking what prabhu pat spoke i am there with you moment you deviate from shila prabhu pat hari krishna i wish you all the best but that's not my path i am following shila prabhu pat once his holiness rompat swami maharaj had come to atlanta and he was giving a class and he was asked a question i forgot the question philosophical and maharaj thought for few seconds his holiness rompat swami maharaj thought for few seconds then he said i have not come across shila prabhu pat uh, mentioning anything about this so i would not like to comment on this question but i feel very safe as long as i am repeating what i have heard from shila prabhu pat and i have not heard shila prabhu pat comment on this particular section so i refrain from commenting that is very nice i was very happy when i heard that i was very inspired this is this is a very nice attitude to always remain in guru padashray so we keep our focus on our lane our lane is the guru parampara the category 1 devotees who are good examples we associate with category 2 to the extent they are following category 1 category 3 we hare krishna so this type of discrimination is required and there is no vaishna aparadh in this because we are doing it internally for ourselves we we, go, we don't go around telling hey that's category 3 <laughs> prabhu do you know that's category 2 who is having difficulties right now let us stay away <laughs> i am category 1 no. it is internal it is internal that that discrimination is internal and rupa goswami says we should do that in nectar of instruction three types of devotees one you offer mental obeisances one you offer physical obeisances and associate with and then the pure devotee you give your heart to and you serve them so rupa goswami says we have to identify who is but we don't do it publicly category 1 category two. uttam that's uttam that's kanishtha <laughs> no we it's internal for our own um, interactions loving interactions that's all there is no vaishnava prad in that yes madam um, can we you're talking about being a good example but that's certainly not a motivation of a practitioner that we want to be a good example because in the uh, in the assembly right right here we could be a good example but what we're doing in private and at home you know that's not seen so um you know so sometimes even the good example we may not be, you know what i mean it may not be accurate but of course i guess over time maybe that better that <laughs> have a good example yes um, shila gaurav maharaj he tells the story of the blue jackal that one there was a jackal in the forest and he came to eat some scraps of food near a village and he fell in the dhobi's tub the dhobi had a tub with blue ink and he fell in that and became blue in color he got dyed blue 
So he goes into the forest and everybody is bewildered. What's this? What kind of a strange creature he is? He's bright blue. There's no one like him. And they ask him, sir, who are you? And the jackal says, I am the king of the forest. God has sent me here to rule over all of you. <laughs> oh, the word spreads around. Oh, here's the king. Here comes the king. They put him on the throne. The lion moves away. He sits on the throne of the lion. And everybody's offering respects. Everybody's bringing food. The lion is bringing him food <laughs> to eat. Chamar and Ulai. Some animals are <laughs> fanning, fanning him with Chamar. And then the sun sets. As soon as the sun sets, the other jackal starts howling. And this so-called blue king, he also starts howling. And the lion says, all right, all right, I know who you are. <laughs> so we can pretend for a while, for some time. But when the sun sets, <laughs> our inner tendencies will come out. So, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said, Saralta hi Vaishnava. A Vaishnava is straightforward. A Vaishnava is what he is outside, same as what he is at home. Saralta hi Vaishnava, straightforward. We should try to be straightforward as much as possible. Because it is not, even the devotees may not know, because devotees are Adosha Darshi. They don't see faults. They will see, consider us to be very advanced. But Krishna knows. He's in the heart. He's the Lord in the heart. He knows exactly what we are. So we always try to be sincere and transparent. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Yes, yes, Prabhuji. I was just wondering. This category three devotees, because I find myself in that category. But uh, how do a devotee, uh, you know, as it, give an example of Bharat Maharaj, right? Someone would have said, Hey, Prabhuji, what are you doing? You're getting attached to a healer. But if this discrimination, internal, although an internal and devotee just avoids the association, so how those category three can be improved? You know, category three can be improved if they take shelter of a category one devotee. And that is voluntary. That is voluntary. Unless we take shelter of an advanced devotee, there is no hope. So, and that is preaching to connect people to Srila Prabhupada. That's our preaching, right? Somehow to connect people to Srila Prabhupada. He is category one. He is the Acharya for us. He is the perfect example. So, yeah, category three, the only hope is that they accept Srila Prabhupada or they accept a pure devotee. Any pure devotee. Hare Krishna. There was one more question. Yes, please, Prabhu. Prabhu, so uh, this team Mahabharata is there. Mm. So, like, why side does we see in Bhagavatam how Narada Muni can take the permission? And also, in the proper memory, we hear like how proper disciples can actually ask him. What the Marti is not Prabhu, so that the Grand Honor Prabhu. They ask Prabhupada and he actually accepts the permission. Take the dust from his feet. And other side we see Chaitanya and Chaitanya, how Advaita Chaitanya is taking the dust of Lord Chaitanya mm -hmm. Mahaprabhu when he is. So what is the thing, like you take permission or you just like? <laughs> so Prabhuji's question for the online audience is, um, there are both types of examples in the Shastra where we take the dust from the lotus feet of a devotee or take their food remnants or water that has washed their feet with permission. Such examples are there <clears throat> in Prabhupada Nila and uh, Narad Muni taking permission from the Bhakti Vedantas <clears throat> and there are examples of Advaita Acharya and Kalidas who never took permission. Uh, he, he would ask permission but if he didn't get permission he would still he would take it anyway. <laughs> Kalidas. Uh, so there are both types of examples. So what is the right way? Actually both are right as long as we take it without embarrassing and without inconveniencing the devotee and as long as our heart is pure. For example, if we really believe that Aditya Narayan Prabhu is such a nice devotee, I want his qualities. He's so sincere. So when he's not looking and he has he is done eating, I will take some remnant from his plate. Huh? <laughs> or I'm I'm just giving everyone an idea. Or or another idea I'm giving yeah. all the advanced devotees here you can make a note which is their footwear <laughs> and, and, and when they are inside you can just go out <laughs> and do the needful <laughs> 
But the, see, the most important thing is what is in our heart? What is our intention? If our intention is this devotee is so nice, I also want to make advancement. And hey Krishna, may I get a fraction of the good qualities of this devotee? With that intention, if we humbly take, without inconvenience in the devotee, without embarrassing the devotee, in a prayerful mood we take, then Krishna will be pleased and the dust will act. We'll show. Huh? So if there, so we, we can ask permission, but the, if the devotee doesn't give permission, then we should not do it in front of the devotee. In front. <laughs> <laughs> because see, in Chaitanya Charitamrit, in Chaitanya Charitamrit, Kalidas example is there. So Kalidas goes to the house of uh, Jadai Thakur, Jadu Thakur, Jadu Thakur, and he says, "I got first class mangoes for you." He says, "Oh, really? But." Uh, Kalidas, you are from high family. I am very low family. He says, no, no, no. What does he say? Uh, Aho, what is that? Uh, uh, he says that because you are chanting the name of Krishna, Aho Bhattaswa Pachato Gariyam, Yaha Jivahagre Vartate Nama Tubhyam. He quotes that verse from third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Mother Devahuti says to Kapila Dev that even if a Shopacha, a dog eater, is chanting your name with the tongue, Jivahagre Vartate Nama Tubhyam, then he is very pure and he can deliver his whole family also. Like yesterday we were reading, so Goshta. With the family they will go. So, <clears throat> so you are always chanting Krishna Nam. So you are Vaishnav and therefore I got this for you. Please eat these mangoes and give me your Mahaprasad. Give me your remnants. Chaturdhaka said, no, no, no. That verse you quoted is right. That verse of Bhagavatam is right. But there is a problem. It doesn't apply to me because I am not a Vaishnav. <laughs> I am not a Vaishnav. So it doesn't apply to me. So I will, I cannot give you. So okay, no problem, no problem. You and your wife enjoy these mangoes, okay? Bye, Hari Bol. He goes and he hides behind a tree. And then he waits there. And Jadu Thakur and his wife, they offer it, those mangoes to Krishna. And then they, Jadu Thakur eats. Then his remnants, his wife eats. And the wife puts everything in a banana leaf, comes out, looks, there's nobody. And throws it where they have the compost. Throws it there and goes inside. After some time, <laughs> <laughs> Kalidas comes out. He knows exactly where it has been thrown. He takes it, takes out the mango seed and Bhakta Pada Dhuli Hara Bhakta Pada Jal Bhakta Bhakta Ava Shesha Tina Mahabal. He eats the Mahaprasad. So if we can ask for permission, Vaishnavas will rarely give. <laughs> I saw one very great devotee. He came to Atlanta. I will not name him. Very great devotee. Shri Prabhupada's follower. He was so pleased with Amarinda Prabhu. I've seen this with my own eyes. He was eating and he saw Amarinda Prabhu said, Amarinda Prabhu, come here. I love your classes. You, I keep watching your classes all the time. You're such a wonderful devotee. Take. With his own hands he gave. Mahaprasad. This is coming from the heart of a devotee. He was so pleased. He wants to give. This devotee said, I pray to Prabhupada. Whatever I have done, if Prabhupada is ever pleased with me, I transfer all the supriti to you, Prabhu. You are so wonderful. Ayy. May you, be, may you continue to be empowered, continue your service. So this is coming from the heart. He is just profusely blessing. Prabhuji, you are, just continue the service that you are doing. So this is one extreme, but we may not be so, I may not be so, so fortunate ever. So then we should pray. We should pray that may I get the mercy. But we have always remember that really the heart of the thing is, we have to follow the instructions. If we are following the instructions, that means we, ha we are the recipient of the dust of the lotus feet. This can be external. My Guru Maharaj gives a horrific example of this. He personally witnessed a new Vrindavan. One senior Prabhupada disciple had come and the devotees were so inspired to take the dust from the feet, they literally attacked that Prabhupada disciple. To take, and he fell and he got a hip fracture. So Maharaj said he came in and he had to be carried on a stretcher. Because devotees want to take dust. So that is not. Taking the dust means to serve the devotee. To please that devotee. To follow the instructions of that devotee. So that we have to understand. Hare Krishna. Yes. Online question. Vrinda Kumari Mataji. In the chat. Can you read? Can you? Ah, okay. Uh, my question is King Rahugana from the family tree of Jada Bharat because he was the king that time and is that also reason why he got to hear from Jada Bharat? I have not read any reference like that. 
<clears throat> that it, it was the same family tree. I do not know. Um, yeah, so I don't know but whether he was in the family tree. We have to see the family tree. I have not seen Rahogana Maharaja's family tree anywhere, so I don't know. Yeah. Can you read? It's very small here. I have to. Maybe I can read. Ah, yes, you can. Whatever is. But just to finish that question of Vrinda Kumari Mataji, definitely it is not because he was in the family tree. That cannot be the reason. Otherwise, Jada Bharat could have given it to his own father. But he never preached to his father. So, Jada Bharat is a Pramhamsa Audhu. He is not acting on the level of family relationships and giving mercy based on family ties. So, that is not the reason. But I don't know if he was in the same family tree. Yes, Prabhuji? No questions. No questions. Okay. So we'll stop then. Uh, yes, sir, this is small thing too. Uh, yes, you mentioned that how your Guru Maharaj tried twice in Kofi. You mentioned him once. Yeah. Hare uh, Krishna. George Harrison and the second. The second one was uh, in the 2002 Vrindavan Yatkartik Yatra when Maharaj was speaking about a sadhu called Ghansham Baba mm -hmm. who used to worship Radha Gopi Vallabh. Uh, he stopped telling his story. So Maharaj was saying that. Um, when I took initiation from Srila Prabhupada, uh, Ghansham Baba told me that your Gurudev Prabhupada has created new Vrindavan in West Virginia in USA. I tell you, it is not different from Vrindavan. And you should go there because visa had expired, so Maharaj had to leave. So Ghansham Baba told Radhanath Maharaj, if you have to leave Vrindavan, then you go to new Vrindavan because your Guru Maharaj has created that and it is not different from uh, this Vrindavan. So you go there. Then Maharaj said, what service should I do there? So Ghanshava thought and said, you should do deity worship. So Maharaj said, okay. And then he also said that, and then you should also bring lots of devotees back to Vrindavan. So then this was years ago. Then Maharaj, you know, he he went, came to US, first went to, I think, Switzerland for one night. Then he came to, he was in New York for some time. And then someone said, Prabhupada is going to uh, New Vrindavan. Anybody wants to accompany? So Maharaj raised his hand and he was brought to New Vrindavan and then he became a pujari there of Radha Vrindavan Nath and uh, they made Sandesh together, <laughs> Apuro Prabhu and my Guru Maharaj and uh, then Maharaj got thousands of devotees to Vrindavan for the Yatra. So Maharaj was remembering the prediction of Ganshan Baba and he became overwhelmed and he choked that was second Maharaj time. Was, I was uh, one of the cooks in New York. And I was sent there to learn from him because everyone knew throughout the movement that he was, Prabhupada loved his milk sweets, other sweets too, but especially his, his sandwich <coughs> was renowned. Hare <laughs> Krishna. Thank you, Apura Prabhu. So that was the second occasion. Hare Krishna. Thank you, dear devotees, for tolerating me. Uh -huh. Please